Leo na karibu, mimi ni mwenyeji wako, popo, na sisi ni popo. All right, that was whatever, that was Swahili, in case you were wondering. My name is Mr. Popo, and we are Popo. In this last part of creating a realistic laser-looking um, tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to composite all the passes that we've created before um, while creating this laser. In case you were wondering on how we created all these passes again, you want to go into diving into details on how to animate them, how to create them, all the tips and tricks, you can find the link below in the description and just follow it up and you should be fine. All right, let's get right into the tutorial. All right, so here we are now inside of After Effects. And before we're going to start and look into the composition, I thought that maybe we should um, look at the passes again. So the first thing is we have an EXR pass and as I showed you in the previous tutorials, this is a pass that has a lot of passes. So for example, if I just bring this in, normally it just looks uh, as normal uh, as a normal render, but then if I bring in an extractor, I'll be able to bring in whatever depth uh, or puzzle mat that I've created. And if I have even more passes, I'll be able to see them here. So here I can see that I have um, the passes here and I can just uh, adjust um, these with levels later on so that I can get um, the kind of perfect, uh, as you can see, the kind of perfect um, depth um, that I'm looking for. And um, yeah. Uh, beside that, what we have is uh, we have this, uh, of course, this uh, legacy or um, lens distortion. We have a, uh, a laser um, cell. This goes up uh, when you're scanning, so you have more of these triangly um, data looking um, paths. Um, we have uh, our first particles and then we have our secondary particles and then we have the laser shot you can see it here but then if I increase this you'll be able to see it so as you can see beautiful and then of course we have our normal pass all right so what happened was since this is a very quick um, uh, break down of how this was done because this is using the same techniques that I've explained before just a little bit um, changing how I play with them so I'm not gonna go into step by step if you are interested into step by step I'm not just gonna post it publicly here so you just can go into the link below and you can follow up um, if you really want to go step by step and get the project file and stuff like that so of course um, the first thing I started with was I just um, I just dropped in the um, I just dropped in the file just like this uh, I have no background I have nothing it's literally just like this all right so once that done I went and I tried to create a background so that I can have more of an understanding of how I feel about the scene so I was like what if this is actually on a um, an empty field but you know it's kind of a bringing the shape and the importance of this tree even more so what I did was I created a background that is not completely black you can see here uh, it's not completely black all right so it's a little bit of blue that, that I took this value and I took it to the black part to the darker part and I went and I brought in the black, but then not too black because there is no such thing as 100% black, all right? So having that, I was like, okay, but we need to bring in more of the form of this uh, particular object, which is in my case, the tree. So I went in and I wanted to really focus on that laser. So I played a bit with the curve and as you can see here, not too much going on. I just took it down and I brought the green values because there were so many greens, I brought them down and uh, that's it, that's literally what's going on. And to make this look even way better, I used um, a amazing plugin that I highly, highly, highly recommend if you don't have it to really go and get it by any means, but just get this plugin. It's called Deep Glow and look what it does. 
The difference between this and the normal glow inside of After Effects is immense. This is the normal glow in After Effects. And this is the real glow, deep glow. So you can see it's years of difference. It's not even close. So using the glow in After Effects is really just, is just mind screwing you every single time that you use it. And you're never gonna get that amount of detail. Vibrance, unfortunately, does not really give as good of a control um, like Deep Glow gives you. So yeah, I got Deep Glow and uh, I got fortunate enough that when I use Deep Glow, I needed to do this unmold. Because if I don't do the unmold, what happened is it's just gonna be black. But when I do the unmold, Deep Glow removes the black. So that when you do your glow, you never have those uh, black shadows that you normally get with the normal glow inside of After Effects. So when I unmold it, what happened is now I have this, you know, I have this more of a transparent. And that was really good because adding all the things that we're gonna add later will just help me really have more control on how this looks. All right, so this is about how I composited the main image. The next thing that I did was I try to make sure that I see the laser. So what I did is I rendered the laser alone as I showed you here, the laser shot, okay? So I went, I brought it in and I used screen so that I can see more of it because right now I don't really see it. So I brought it in, oh, not this one. Uh, where's the laser? Okay, there we go. Okay, so I brought it in, I put it on add, and then I added um, some stack of effects. As you can see here, I did the curve so that I can add a bit of it, but then I was like, I still don't see it. I added a normal glow. I'm starting to see it a bit. I was like, all right, let's color it a bit to fit in everything. And then let's just add a more deep glow. As you can see, it really brings it up. And then I was like, all right, we're just gonna go and double this. All right, so I just took the same thing and I just doubled it. Okay, cool. Then what I did was like, all right, so I pretty much have this, but then I don't have a feeling of the scene. I don't feel this, all right? So I know that this is a laser, beautiful. I love this um, details on the laser. But the problem is I don't have a feeling of the whole entire scene. If I look at this and I look at another picture, I'm not going to pick this as the best picture. So I was like, I need to add some atmosphere. That's what's missing here. Basically, this scene is in the middle of a nowhere. And that's not what I wanted and I intended to create. So what I did was I went and I created an optical flare from this side, this side to show that there is a little bit of light. So you're not in the middle of a nowhere. It's like you're in a forest, a dark forest, the dark realm, the death realm. All right, not death realm, but <laughs> you get what I mean. So I got that and I was like, all right, cool. I see this, but hear me out. I don't really feel like that this is any special anymore because there is, there is this light and now I barely can notice this anymore. So what I did was I took this pass, which is this one, okay, which is this one, all right? So I have the shape of the tree and I'm like, normally when you're painting, when you're doing um, this overpaint and you're doing concept art, you will learn that the way to actually bring up an object is just to put a light behind it. And this is why I highly recommend you guys and you can see on my Instagram or my Twitter, what I do is I actually follow people from different disciplines. And the reason I do this is because I can develop an understanding and I can develop an eye for things that I probably would never, never be able to get close to if I just stick with motion design. So now I do this and I do that and I do that. And that is only thanks to the fact that I'm always open to other disciplines. So keep that in mind. Have this discipline of you always checking things that are not always in your circle. Try to get out of your circle.
all right, of your comfort zone. So knowing, learning this from the concept artist, I was like, all right, so I have that. Now, the only thing that I need to do is here. This is the normal thing. So I'm just gonna go and extract the puzzle mat and I'm just gonna fill it with white. The reason I do this, it's because I can now use an alpha inverted. Alpha inverted of what exactly? Alpha inverted of this. You see how the shape brought up? You see how now you can see the tree? And that is because, let me show you what I exactly did. So I'm just gonna, so this is what I have now. I just brought up the shape. The way I brought up the shape is by creating an optical flares, a lens flare, nothing else. It's just the glow. That's it. All right. So then by using the alpha inverted on this thing, I was able to actually see only the lights that are outside of the shape. And now what happened is, you see, you see now that we have an atmosphere, you see the difference? Now that I have an atmosphere, and I'm just gonna bring back the lasers, it looks pretty good, but it's not good enough. I have so much space. I need you to look exactly here. I want you to look here. So I'm gonna go and create a vignette for that. And as you can see, I make sure that, you see, I just want you to look here. So I went and I masked out the part that I don't want. And as you can see here, it's just literally a solid. Okay. Now I was like, all right, cool. I wanna feel how it's gonna look like at the end. So what I did was I went and I started with some color correction. See how different it is? So what I did was obviously you guys know me, I love grain. So I added a little bit of grain, okay? I added a little bit of grain and just so that you can see what grain does, look here. See, clear, not clear. And this is the real thing. In real life, we have particles, we have pollution, we have light dust and stuff like that. So there is no such thing as 100% clear, okay? So now that I brought that up, I went and I sharpened everything because I wanted to look more on this crispy, on these crispy lasers that we created. All right, that's perfect. Now, what I did is I went and I played a little bit with the vibrance so that I can bring in more of the blue values and the green so that it can merge together perfectly instead of just raw value. You see, raw, merged. Okay, now that we have that, I'm like, this is great. Let's add a little bit of a, of a mood. So I went and I used a lot. See that? I went and I used a lot so that I can get some colors on the atmosphere around the tree. Now this is perfect. Now I just need to work on it a little bit more. So what I did was I went and um, I tried to add a little bit of a, of a depth into this uh, tree because right now it's just like one value. I wanted to add more depth into it. So I went to my depth value So I extracted, I extracted the depth and then playing with the alpha. See that? Now I started playing with the alpha so that I can get it to a value that I'm really happy with. Perfect. But now I feel like I brought more of the shape but the problem is I lost a lot of details. And I'm like, that's exactly what I want. But then I want the details that are just on the laser. So I literally lost everything that I needed to stay up. Well, I have something called masking. So let's do that. So what I went was I started little by little bringing up the shape. You see that? So only where the light is hitting, that's where I'm gonna see the shape. And that's exactly how real life actually works. All right, 
and uh, yeah, uh, that is happening. I went and uh, I just started adding more shape, you know, light around this um, laser scan. And then I was like, all right, cool. What is a popo image without trap code form? All right, so I went and what I did was I used form uh, to bring in this. So if I need um, to actually just, let's just, let me just hide everything and just show you. This is the trap code form. So I use the same technique as uh, we used before. And that is, I went, I took this image and uh, composited it and then I just use trap code form uh, size layer to start reading this. And now if I change my picture, uh, all I have to do is replace the picture here, replace the picture here, and I'm done. And I don't even need to replace it here. I only need to replace it here. If I replace this picture, trap code form is automatically gonna update it. And that's how I like to, to work. I like to work in a way that is modular, that I can, that is not destructive. Just because I change one thing, it doesn't mean that I need to change everything. I just change one thing and then I'm done. For example, I can just go and render this on another object and all I have to do is just literally replace these and everything is gonna be perfect. All right, cool. Now that we have the form, I'm like, all right, we have the form, but we don't have the particles. We need to see the particles. So I brought in the first particle so rendering this particle, what I did was I colored it to make it a little bit different. I colored it with a tint and then I gave it some glow. Perfect. And then I needed the secondary particles. So I brought in more particles, but then I gave them a color off. The, 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 the. It's like the opposite of blue is yellow. We all know that or orange. And uh, I tried to do the opposite of blue and orange. And uh, yeah, I mean of orange and yellow, and that was blue, and then I gave it glow again. Perfect, now we have this image. That's great, it's not great enough. So what I went is, uh, remember this? So look here. You see that detail? It's so subtle, but it's there. So this will bring in more. And I actually can even go and try to style it even more. But I felt like there was no need. There is a lot of details already. But you could go and actually bring this up even more if you feel like it. All right, something like that. It actually looks really great. But I don't like things to be so out there. And uh, the last thing what I did was uh, I tested with a little bit of 3D stroke. And yeah, it's like these scan lines that are gonna happen while this is going up. It's like it's scanning continuously. Again, if you wanna know how everything was done, you can check the link below for more and more details on how to create every single thing. All right, so that is done. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's, uh, let's create even more optical flares. All right, just to put it in front because everything that we created here was the behind so we were missing that front part you see we we're missing that front part so i just added exactly the same thing that i did here but in the front with slightly less light okay um that is done i felt like all right um i need to add a little bit of form on the lasers and now i have these crazy detail look at that look at that Look at that. I used exactly this same technique for this comp, but here. And now I have these insane, beautiful details that I can go and control the color of them as I feel like it. Now I can just control this. So I can just go and, uh, hold on. Uh, I can just go and do, um, and do this. And they're gonna change. I can just go and create whatever I feel like it. All right, so the last thing that I went and, uh, yeah, and did was uh, add, uh, look at this, add the particles that are floating around, just like this um, little uh, insects, I forgot the name, um, I don't have it on top of my head, but you know what I mean, it's like this eerie, um, fantastic kind of feeling. 
that's it for me for this creating a realistic laser light without using X particles or any other plugins in Cinema 4D. The only plugins that we used is Trap Code, which you actually need if you have After Effects, and Dip Glow. I highly recommend Dip Glow. Please go and get it. Do yourself a favor, help yourself, help kittens get vaccinated. COVID is not a joke. My name is Mr. Popo. Please, please, if you like this video, help me with a thumbs up. It helps people actually get reached and see this video. It helps me, makes me feel good about myself. It's like, oh, I'm doing a great job. All right, let's make more. And talking about making more, I would like to take this time and opportunity to thank all the Patreons that have been helping me and seeing all the support is actually what made me wake up this early in the morning to record this tutorial. And I'm thinking of recording a tutorial even tomorrow. My name is Mr. Popo and I thank you so much for your support. And here's your name, your name, your name, your name, your name, your name. All right, your names are all over the screen. My name is Mr. Popo and we are Popo. I'll see you on the next one.